We talk a lot about food waste in the zero waste world, but I feel like we really talk about why food waste is actually bad. I've never seen another content creator talk about it at least. And I learned so much in my research for this video, I couldn't help but share. I felt like I was gatekeeping if I kept it all. And obviously like you can go do your own research. But again, the point is I've never seen another zero waster talk about why food waste is actually bad for the environment other than methane, which I'm sure we've all heard about. But today we're gonna dive into food waste. Why is it bad not only for the planet, but also for your wallet, also for food hunger, and also a question that a lot of people have. If food waste equals methane, where does the methane go if we put food in our compost or in our stomachs? Or in the stomachs of our dogs. Can you see them? There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> Every day in the US, approximately one pound of food per person is wasted. That is about 30 to 40% of our food supply chain. This equates to 25% of our landfill space. Now, just to keep things clear, this is not just what households are throwing away, this is the entire supply chain. So this is products from the farmer, from the grocery store, from restaurants, and so forth. That being said, the amount that we're throwing away as individuals is still astronomical and equates to about $370 per person or $1,500 per family of four. As I already mentioned, it's kind of a buzzword in the zero waste community, and that is that food waste brings methane. And methane is so bad because it is 80 times worse than carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is often seen as this like greenhouse gas villain when in reality methane is even worse. Estimates show that we could cut out global greenhouse gas emissions by six to eight percent if we quit wasting food. In the US alone food waste is equivalent to 32.6 million cars. As already said food waste is the largest category of food that we're sending to landfills. And if you're like me and you're wondering how long we have until our landfills run out, because I like to ask myself those scary questions a lot, you can check out this video up here. Spoiler alert, we don't have as long as I thought we did. Um, so as much as we can reduce from the landfill, the better. Isn't that right? <laughs> if you follow me on TikTok, you know that Danahi actually helps our household reduce food waste. He eats things like apples. Like if we had some apples that we weren't gonna eat before they go bad, we would give them him, give them to him. He eats broccoli stems, cauliflower stems. What else? If we have any peppers about to go bad or any carrots about to go bad, those are for you. They're your little snacks. Our landfills are the third largest source of human related, human caused methane emissions. And this equates to about 14.1% of US total emissions in 2017. But something I think about that isn't talked about enough when it comes to food waste, I feel like we only focus on methane emissions, but something else we need to talk about is wasted energy, time, manpower, resources, money, and more resources. All of this stuff goes into creating our food. Someone planted the seeds for your tomatoes. Someone fertilized that lettuce you're eating. Someone harvested those potatoes that you had for dinner. Water was used to grow all of them. Gas was used to transport them. Electricity was used to store them properly at your grocery store. Electricity is still used to store them properly in your home. We focus so much on the end game, which of course is important, but we also need to acknowledge the waste that goes from putting that seed in the ground all the way to it ending up in the landfill, not just the part about it ending up in the landfill. Now, if all of this already doesn't encourage you to reduce your food waste, let's talk about the money. Because of course, money's a great motivator, and even if that's your only motivator for living low waste, that's totally valid. As already discussed, it's around $375 per person of food waste wasted per year, so you as an individual could save $375 per year, on average, maybe more, if you, if you waste a lot of food, if you just cut your food waste a little bit or maybe all the way. So the total for US consumers, farmers, and businesses is around $218 billion. And that's just on the value of the food. That's not even counting costs that it takes to actually dispose of them, like driving trash trucks, operating a landfill, operating a compost facility. And even as consumers, we have a trash bill too. So the less we're putting into our trash cans, Actually, I don't know if that's how trash bills work, but I know you do have to pay for extra trash cans. So if your family is producing so much waste that you have to buy a second or a third trash can to put out on your street, if you reduce your food waste, you could probably get some of your money back by not having to have so many bins out on the curb. And of course, we can't go without talking about water usage, especially on this channel. I've become quite the water activist since moving to the desert. So 70% of the fresh water used throughout the entire world is used for agriculture, not just for like, agriculture, fruits and vegetables that we eat, but also for animal agriculture. And 80% of Lake Mead specifically goes towards agriculture, which makes like water waste and the, and the means of talking about food waste even more frustrating to me because we're literally running out of water in the desert and you can learn more about that up here. So in short, food waste equals water waste. But also food has other sorts of resource footprints like carbon, 
um, fertilizer, etc. So, and here's just a few stats to put it into perspective for you. Every pound of beef that you throw away is equivalent to throwing away 25,000 liters of water, and every glass of milk equals 1,000 liters of water. Now, those are some very high carbon and water intensive foods. Throwing away like a grape or a tomato isn't going to have that same amount of impact, but it will in the long run. So, the moral of the story here is if you wanna reduce your water consumption, reduce your food waste. And if you would like more ways to reduce your water consumption, you can check out this video up here. I had someone ask on a recent Instagram post about Danahi eating our food waste, about what happens to the methane, because I mentioned, of course, as everybody does, that if you, when you send your food to the, the landfill, it creates methane. And this person's like, well, where does that methane go? If it's not going into the landfill and then evaporating after that, surely it's going into your compost pile or your dog's pooping it out for lack of better words. And I'm like, wait, that's actually a really good question. I've never researched that before. I've never heard anybody talk about it before. Where does our methane go? Or does it just never get created in the first place? I had a lot of questions. So if you're a scientist and you can explain this better, please feel free to educate us down below. But here's what I found. All my sources are linked down below and I'm going to put it in simple terms. So methane is produced when organic matter breaks down. So when we send potatoes or lettuce or pumpkins to the landfill, it creates methane because it's breaking down. Methane also occurs in digestions as well as harvesting oil, coal, and other um, fossil fuels. Because oil and coal are organic matter that had broken down millions and millions of years ago and had been stored in oil pockets or lumps of coal in the ground as carbon and methane deposits. So when we harvest them, that methane is then released, as well as the carbon dioxide. Here's a nice chart of a breakdown of California methane emissions from 2017, showing that the largest emitters of methane are landfills, the dairy industry, and other livestock. So if we don't send our food to the landfill and we eat it and digest it, we do produce some methane, again, according to this chart. The landfills account for 21% of methane emissions, while only 3% of methane emissions come from us in our sewage water. So it's very clear that the more we eat, the less methane we're, we're producing, but how? And doesn't that mean that by composting, we're creating methane? No, and this is why composting is so important in the fight against food waste and methane emissions and climate change and food waste <laughs> and composting is just one of the best things that we can do for the planet and I can't hype it up enough. Methane producing microbes are not active in the presence of oxygen and oxygen is one of the key factors to a good compost pile. And that's how we get so much methane in our landfills is because there's no oxygen in a landfill, because we're putting our food waste into a plastic bag, tying it up, and then that plastic bag is going to a landfill and being covered by another sheet of plastic. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how landfills work, there is dirt and grass and other organic matter involved, but because we use so much plastic to tie it up ourselves, that's creating methane, but I'm quite confident that most landfills also have to lay down layers of plastic to keep everything contained and from flying away and spewing all over and seeping everywhere. So even if we don't bag our food, even if we don't bag our trash in general, it's still gonna be covered in plastic and there's still gonna be a lack of oxygen in a landfill. It would probably be better if we didn't use bags, but I don't think the problem would be solved completely. So hopefully that makes sense. My mind was absolutely blown. Now, what can we do though to reduce food waste other than of course composting. These are in sort of an order. I tried to I tried to order them in a way from like going shopping to composting kind of in that line of thought, but there's also they're a little random. And if you have any more ways that you reduce food waste, please leave them down below for the rest of us. First is to support food waste efforts. There are so many great brands out there, brands like Ugly, The Rotten Fruit Box, Climate Candy, and so much more. They're actually taking rotten, bad, ugly fruit and turning it into candy, dehydrated fruits, dehydrated soup mixes, and so forth. Notice I didn't say Misfits Markets or Imperfect Foods. I'm starting like a little greenwashing series here in 2022. This is 2023. <laughs> In 2023, I don't wanna say exposing, but I guess like trying to uncover the truth about some of these really popular eco zero waste brands. I recently did one about laundry sheets, so brands like True Earth and Kind Laundry, etc. And then I'm doing one next week about Lomi because I figured we're talking about food waste, we might as well talk about Lomi next week. So many people have questions about Lomi and whether it's greenwashing or not, but all this to say, I wanna dive into Misfits Markets and Imperfect Foods and other similar food boxes because while they claim they're reducing food waste, they're kinda not. And if you've ever ordered from them, you would agree because all of the food they send me is like so underripe and not ugly. I'm like, someone totally would've bought this in a supermarket when it was actually ripe. Anyway, number two is to meal plan and meal prep. This looks different for everybody. This could look like cooking all your meals on the weekend so that you have them ready to go and you're not gonna waste any food that way. But for me, it looks like just writing out like a little menu for the week so that we know which five, six, seven meals we're gonna be eating that week for lunch and dinner. And then 
when I go to the grocery store, I don't overbuy on ingredients and therefore don't waste any food or waste as little as possible. Number three, we're kind of looping it back to the first one and that is to just buy ugly foods that you see in the grocery store. Because so many people, humans, we just love pretty things. We love aesthetically pleasing things. So if you see something that's ugly, chances are no one else is going to buy it. So you should pick up that ugly one, whether it be a misshapen apple or a potato or even things like single bananas in dented cans. Um, this isn't just like fruit and vegetables. This is anything in a grocery store, a dented box, etc. Buy the ugly stuff because it's likely to expire and just get thrown away. Now, once you get back home, store all of your produce and food properly. I can't believe I forgot that one. I'm not a food storage expert and this is something I'm still learning as a zero waster and I would love to share more on in the future like food storage tips, a full video on it. Some examples are tomatoes are best kept outside the fridge. Once your avocados are, are ripe, outside the fridge, put them in the fridge to keep them last even longer because we all know avocados last for about two seconds. Carrots actually are stored best outside the fridge too. And then things like broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce are all best stored in the fridge. I personally find that chopping my broccoli and cauliflower helps it last longer too. Storing lettuce in a damp um, paper towel or regular cloth rag helps it keep fresh longer. There are so many ways to keep your food fresh longer. So look into that as well as well as moving all of your old stuff forward. So when you get home and you have a new cucumber, but there's already a cucumber in your drawer, move that one to the front or the top of the drawer and then put the newer one on the bottom. So that way you eat that older one first and it doesn't go to waste. And the same with canned goods, obviously that they have a lot longer shelf life. So you have some more time to get to them, but it's still nice to like rotate them out. So that way you get to the ones that are closer to expiry first. Number five is to take home leftovers from restaurants. If you enjoy leftovers and now you have a little bonus meal, bonus zero waste tip is to bring your own container I'm absolutely terrible at that, but I'm so anti-food waste that I would rather take home a little container and eat that food waste than they go to waste, especially because a lot of the, the restaurants I frequent are like eco-centric, which means that they have containers that are easily reused or recyclable and not something like styrofoam or compostable like paper. Number six, we kind of already talked about it when Danahi was here, and that is to learn how to cook with food waste. I do have like this little food fighting, food waste fighting series on my TikTok where I show how I feed my dog all of my food waste. But there are also a lot of ways that we can eat our food waste too. You can chop up broccoli stems and add them to any soup, curry, stir fry. You can use brown bananas for so many things. Cookies, oatmeal, banana bread, smoothies, nice cream, and so much more. You can make carrot top pesto. You can add your cauliflower stems to any meal as well. You can turn old bread into breadcrumbs or croutons or bread pudding. There are so many ways to use food waste instead of throwing it away. Obviously there are some exceptions like if it's moldy or just straight up gross, but if it's still edible in some way, it just needs to be revived, think about using it in a, in a different way. Number seven, of course we have to talk about it again, and that is to compost. I am a strong believer in that I think anybody can compost in some way, and before you click away, let me explain. If you own your home, you can easily throw a compost bin or a compost pile in your yard. There are very little maintenance. If you're renting, you can still get a compost bin. I'm renting, I have a yard, so I can't like, do anything structurally or on the ground because I don't want to ruin this person's property when I move. But I am able to set up a small compost bin that's like above the surface and I can easily transport and give to someone else when I move. Now, say you don't have a yard, you still can compost, believe it or not. You could, if you have the space, you could bokashi compost or vermicompost, both of which shouldn't smell if you're doing them properly and can be done in small areas. But if you're still not a fan of that, you can use um, this app slash website called Share Waste, where you can find people who compost in your area that you can just drop it off to. Of course, I didn't mention it because I don't have access to it, so I never think about it. If you, some people might actually have access to curbside composting services. I know when I visited Vancouver, they had an organic bin that a truck would just come pick up all your organic matter and take it to a commercial composting facility. And that's becoming really popular in a lot of big cities. I know a lot of cities in California do it, and maybe some in Texas. And we're gonna touch on it real quick. You can use the Lomi. We're gonna talk about it next week in depth, but obviously if I'm recommending it now, you can, you can kind of see my thoughts on the Lomi based on that. It's obviously not a budget option. The rest of these are free or very cheap. The Lomi is not. It will pay for itself if you use it for several years. But despite the price and the energy usage, I think it is a great way to reduce food waste in a small space. Number eight is to eat your leftovers or give them to someone who does. I know a lot of people who don't like leftovers, which I find weird because I love leftovers. I, I love cooking, but I also love not cooking and enjoying my free time. But if you don't like leftovers, plan around that and make sure that you don't have any so that you're not wasting food waste once your meal is over. Number nine is to check, I've been saying these wrong because I added that bonus tip 
Um, so this one's actually number 10. Number 10 is to check your fridge and your pantry before cooking and before going to the grocery store. This way you can see if you can actually just cook something that you already have. For example, this week we needed like a last minute meal before we're about to head out of town. And I was like, wait, we have some asparagus, we have some tofu, we have a curry block, we have some cabbage, we have some peas. I'm just gonna make curry with this like it's gonna be garbage curry because all this food would have otherwise ended up in the landfill and now it's a meal and then the same goes when you're about to head to the grocery store if i see oh i already have two cans of chickpeas and i have two meals that need chickpeas this week i don't have to buy any chickpeas obviously that's a little different because it is a canned good try to use your produce first because it will go bad first um but you get the idea as you see there are so many ways that we can avoid sending food to the landfill especially now that we truly understand how bad food waste is for the environment and how accessible and easy composting can be i'm i'm still very much aware that not everybody can compost for some reason or another but even if you think that you can't for whatever reason i encourage you to still look into it because there are new ways being invented to compost and make composting easy and accessible every single day um, and i still truly truly think that composting is one of the best things we can do as individuals for the planet if i missed any tips for food waste please leave them down below and if you have any questions about composting let me know as well i want to make a comp more composting videos this year but I don't know what you guys want to know about composting. So whatever questions about composting you have, leave them down below and I'll address it later this year. And I hope that you enjoyed this and learned a lot from it. If you found any value in it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up as well as if you shared it with others. Again, this is something I just learned about this week and I've been zero waste for like four or five years. I'm sure there are so many people out there who don't know all this stuff. So all this info is very valuable. And I say this a lot, but I'm not saying this for personal fame or glory because I think this is truly important. And I think that fighting food waste is one of the best things that we can do to fight so many things, money struggles, hunger, climate change, and so forth. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. We talk a lot about food waste in the zero waste world. We talk a lot about zero waste. <laughs> oh my gosh. And until next time, remember that you're... <laughs> I just kind of shut down. That is about 30 to 40 per... Just hit the thing. And why is methane so bad? And that is because methane is about 80 times worth... worth. But why is methane so bad? That is because... Estimates show that we could cut out global greenhouse gas emissions by six or eight. Estimates show that we could cut out global. Gr <sighs> Am I done recording yet? Estimates show that we could cut global.